welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to be diving into the real rivalry that is Kyla versus Miguel. Now, this one here is one of the reasons why I'm so glad, I was so excited for the fact of bringing Kyla back into Season 3. And I was, just before the trailer, um, I think around the time the trailer released, I was secretly hoping and praying that, you know, he wasn't going to be outed out of the Cobra Kai dojo. I wanted him to be brought into the fold because, at least to me and in my opinion, Kyla is a natural fit for Cobra Kai. He fits, he fits in perfectly. He's everything Kreese would want in a, in a Cobra student, and it just makes sense. Now, the reason why Miguel needed to fight Kyla was not just for a parallel, but it is also very symbolic. It's very symbolic of when Miguel started to first engage himself in uh, the karate training, and Kyla was his first. Uh, Kyla was his first, you know. Kyla beat the crap out of him. Miguel learned a bit of karate, kicked him, and he got beat the crap out of him again. And then this time in the school fight, goes to town on every single one of them and lays the smackdown on them. Now, one of my favorite moments in season three is at the start of the house fight. After Bert gets thrown through the window, you just see Hawk and Kyla entering in, and then Miguel and Kyla just exchanging a back and forth, and they're both remembering the memories, but Kyla's sort of maybe remembering it as, okay, now it's my turn. And Miguel's like, ah, I'm a little bit out of the game here. Crap. Um, and just throughout the whole, the whole house fight... Just seeing these two go at it again and duke it out, you know, very reminiscent of the uh, the season one days. And as I've said, you know, as much as the rivalry between Miguel and Robbie is a thing in a way, um, I feel like that a lot of their differences could be sold by just locking the two of them in a room and setting them down and, you know, cuffing them to a chair and letting them just talk like an actual conversation. But Kyler and Miguel's little um, spat, that, that right there, that has a lot of rivalry to it. That was the foundation especially in season one for miguel to really sort of you know learn from johnny learn the cobra kai teachings and as i said lay the smack down on kyler and his crew so i i really enjoyed seeing kyler and miguel go at it again and we got to see a bit more of kyler throughout season three we got to see a little bit more you know of what it is that he actually d uh, does and i remember in season one he says i gotta cut weight for the meat or something i think that means you know, that was like a throwaway line saying, you know, he is, uh, he does wrestling and all that kind of stuff. So seeing it pay off in season three is cool because then that means you integrate that with karate and you have a very, you, you know, you have a grappler, you know, Cobra Kai now has a grappler, which is good. Now, obviously Kyla against the likes of Hawk or Robbie or Miguel, you know, or even Sam, potentially Tori, I don't think he's going to hold a candle to them. You know what I mean? But Kyler against people like Mitch, Kyler against people like Chris or Dimitri, who I really want him to face in the in the tournament. I really want Dimitri and Kyler to face off. I think Kyler is a perfect, perfect opponent for Dimitri to go up against because throughout Dimitri's evolution up to this point, we've seen him grow, we've seen him evolve, but I really feel like Kyler would be a good test of how good Dimitri is now. And we can really see him overcome that obstacle, especially in season three with Kyla basically bullying him again. Now that Kyla's with the, you know, the Cobra Kai crew, he's always picking on people that are somewhat, you know, either weaker than him or an easier target than people he could target, if you know what I mean. He knows if he targets Miguel, Miguel's going to whoop his ass. And shout out to Miguel. Even though Miguel is literally just back from injury, still manages to get the best of Kyla. So, you know, it's not like Kyler is one of the top dogs, but he is an asset. He is an asset to whatever dojo he's in. And his brutality is exactly the reason why Kreese wanted him in the first place. He's a natural athlete. He fits. And, you know, he's an added sort of henchman to the mix. But I love that Kyler and Miguel have this exchange in the house. And it's literally just full circle. It's full circle right back to... Um, the, be the beginnings of season one. That's one thing I loved about season three. Is it felt very reminiscent of what season one was. Uh, establishing characters. You know, paying off arcs. Or no, not paying off arcs, sorry. Building arcs. Setting up things for the future. And to see Kyler and Miguel go at it again. This time. When you consider all the history that they've had in the past. 
and now Kyla is officially in the mix even more. Like, and I, I really hope that we get more on Kyla next season. Anytime I'm doing a stream, you know, everyone always asks me to say the line, you know, I've got a lot on my mind right now. If I don't pass trick this semester, and then, you know, I'll let you guys put the rest down in the comments section. But the, the point of it is, is that I felt it was necessary for Miguel to face someone like Kyla, who we know, we know Miguel can beat him. There's no tension there. But because Miguel is just back from injury, he's fresh, Kyla is the perfect opponent to face him to really test how far Miguel has come, but also harken back to the beginnings of the show and go, you know what, this is the journey that this little story between these two have gone on, and it's just a way of showing it more than anything. So I really enjoyed that. I really thought it was very symbolic. I love the parallels in between, and I think it was just necessary. I think if there was any person for Miguel to fight, you know, if you pick anyone out in that Cobra Kai dojo, obviously, if he's going to fight Tori in some way, shape, or form, that'll be in the Ore Valley. Tori and Sam, that, that's the rivalry there. Um, they weren't going to have him fight Hawk, because Hawk is his best friend. Um, and Hawk, you know, is was set up for the redemption moment later in the house. But I suppose, you know, looking back, they could have had Hawk go up against Miguel, but I think they didn't purposely just because, you know, they, they know Hawk's going to redeem in a second. They don't want to have them two clashing, you know. They want to have Hawk maybe fighting all the other students. So from just r realism, it makes sense Kyla was the pick. And again, that's why I'm so glad that they brought him in because, yes, I know he doesn't stack up to the top fighters in the show, but he is a good fighter, you know. Compared to, like, the, the, the cannon fodder of Miyagi-Do and Eagle Fang, Kyla can give them a real match. And I feel like he can only go from strength to strength and learn even more. You know, he's a grappler. He's got some, he, he, he's, he's, he's trained in grapples. You know, that's his kind of specialty and skill set. You know, every character has their specific moves. I think Miguel's sort of approach is get in fast and hard, take him out. Robbie's is more like, you know, um, flexibility, agility, um, acrobatics. You've got Hawks, which is more brutal and relentless. You know, each character has their sort of their sort of type of fighting and just sort of, you know, it gives them individuality. You know, that's why I like that each character has their own kind of way of fighting. It just makes them, you know, it, it doesn't get repetitive having everyone just be a fighter. They've all got something different that kind of separates them from the guy to their left or the girl to their right. It's, it's cool. It's cool. But guys and girls... Leave your comment section down below. I know some of you have been asking me to talk a little bit more about um, other characters. But I thought I'd give, uh, you know, the guy who needs to pass his uh, trigonometry a shout. Um, I've done a video on Kyler in the past. And I said, this this is how you develop side characters. This is exactly how, you know. And I know some of you who have been in my streams or, you know, are Star Wars fans, you'll know. Th this is how you don't develop side characters. I'm the spy. Um, yeah, you don't do that. It's payback time, Rhea. As much as no one else wants to say that besides himself, carries a lot more weight than the other one. So I'll let you really judge it, which is better. But guys and girls, jump in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought of Kyla's arc up to this point. Um, would you be interested to see more from him next season? And this is the thing. With season three, all the characters were all over the place. You know, you had Hawk and Kreese over here. You had Tori over here. You had, Haw you know, Miguel and Johnny over there. You had Robbie and Juvie. You had Daniel and Okinawa. You know, you had all the characters literally, every like, all over the gaff. Like, they were all over the place. With the All Valley being the target, we can really focus on each character because... There's one goal. There is one focus for all these characters now. And they're not all over the place. They're going to, most times, they're going to be pretty much together. So right throughout, throughout season two, you got a lot of development for a lot of the characters because most of the characters were together for a good chunk of the time because it was about the dojo war. And that's what season four is going to probably go back to is, you know, specifically just the dojo war. It was there season three, but I feel like season four is really going to sort of hone in on that. And as the season progresses, you're going to start to see characters' motivations come through. You're going to see maybe why Dimitri wants to win the tournament, why Hawk wants to win the tournament, uh, why Sam wants to win the tournament, why Tori would like to win the tournament, you know? I mean, obviously, they'd all like to win it, but I think the motivations for why they're doing it will become very clear. Um, and it won't all just be because, you know, Chris says, hey, we need to win. Each character is going to have a very specific reason as to why they need to win. 
Robbie's, as I said, it's his, re it's his, in his eyes, it's his redemption and it's his win that he is due. Hawk winning it would be a big middle finger to Crease, you know, for picking Robbie over him, and it would be just perfect for his arc. Miguel winning it would be proving that he can do it again. Sam doing it would be proving that, you know, while she is her father's daughter, she is herself and she is a capable leader and she can develop on her own. For Tori, it would be a case of, you know, how many losses is she, you know, how many fights has she started that she she's lost, you know? So it would be a way of her staking a claim saying, hey, I'm number one. You know, you so each character will have their motivations very clearly spread out across the season. And then going into the All Valley, that's when it's going to be, that's, that's where the fun begins. So guys and girls, jump in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a, a load of mention of Kyla's famous line down in the comments. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. You guys all know the line. Say it down in the comment section. I'll see you down there soon. And remember, if I don't pass trick this semester, my dad... Quickly before I end, I just want to say, didn't you all have chills in season one when Miguel's stepping up to Kyla? And Kyla's like, you didn't, you know, you didn't learn your lesson and rada rada rada. And then Miguel just walks up to him, the music's building, and he grabs his arm, he's like, it's Cobra Kai. Smacks him right in the face. Woohoo! Chills!